All right, what is up, my friends? I am excited, and you should be too. The London Mulligan is on Magic Online. They're testing it out. For those who don't know what that is, the London Mulligan is going to be a mulligan rule, a new mulligan rule, tested out at the Mythic Championship slash Pro Tour in London in a few weeks. And it's a, a new way to mulligan. Basically, what it is, is every time you would mulligan, you instead draw seven cards and then put X cards under the bottom of your deck, where X is the number of times you've mulliganed. So say you say you mulligan to five, you draw seven cards, you put two back on the bottom. And um, this is not a rule yet. This is a, they're testing it out at uh, Mythic Championship London, and they're going to go from there. If it works out well, people like it, it may become the rule for all of Magic. If it doesn't work well, it may not. But on Magic Online right now, they are testing it out every format on Magic Online right now is using the London Mulligan rule. Now, the Mythic Championship in London is modern, so that's the most important one we're focusing on right now. And quick word about the Mulligan. The Mulligan seems great for Limited and for Standard. It seems a little weirder in older formats because in older formats, the power level is much higher and decks are often more about trying to assemble a certain powerful combination of cards rather than a raw number of cards. So, you know, as you're playing, you know, Esper Control and Standard, you just want cards. You know, there's no real two-card combo that's going to go crazy and win you the game. You know? But in older formats, you know, Tron lands, and Dredge card plus Enabler plus land, Show and Tell Emrakul, Reanimate and Tomb. You know, the these combo decks that are just looking for one or two cards that win the game don't really care about how many cards they have. They care about having the right amount of cards. So in those decks, which already mulligan aggressively, can go down to five or four cards, but still get a lot of extra looks. Very powerful. Uh, on stream this week, I played uh, Modern Dredge. I played Modern Serum Powder Eldrazi. Um, I played Legacy Reanimator. All decks that seem to benefit from the London Mulligan. But we saved the best for you fine folks here on Monday on CoolStuffInc.com in Modern Tron. A deck, of course, I've been playing a lot lately. I've written a lot about it. I've played it a lot in tournaments. I top eight at Cincinnati with it. Top 16 Philadelphia with it. And this is, I think, perhaps the deck that benefits most from the London Mulligan. Tron is probably one of the best mulliganing decks in Modern. Um, I would say if you're playing Tron correctly, you should be starting every game with an average of 5.5 cards. Um, you should mulligan five or six times a match because the deck mulligans so well because literally all you need is this and this and this and one of these you know, one of your big cards, and you can play a pretty serious game of Magic on four cards or five cards. I've won countless games playing Tron on four cards. I've even won like one or two games on three cards playing Tron. So the deck already mulligans great, and for decks that already want to mulligan to five or four pretty frequently, the London Mulligan is a huge advantage, because now we get to see the full seven cards, pick the ones we want, and go from there. And redundant pieces in Tron are basically irrelevant. Uh, that second Urza's Mine, that second Karn, that second Forest, you just don't need it. You know, so this is, I think, the perhaps best London Mulligan deck. We're going to try it out today. I am super excited to try this out. Um, you know, there's still a question if the London Mulligan is too good or not. Um, I don't think it's too good. Um, Autumn, a uh, recent Mythic Championship winner, had a great tweet about it saying that that the London Mulligan probably isn't too good, but it probably exposes some decks that may be too good, and maybe those decks shouldn't exist and the Mulligan should. So definitely a good take on that. Check that out. But let's, uh, let's jump right in here. Um, don't need to really explain what Tron is. I've written tons of articles about it, played it on split it in videos, and uh, we all know what Tron does. And again, I think that one of the biggest mistakes Tron players often make is not mulliganing aggressively enough. And now we have this new tool to mulligan even more aggressively. So our biggest things with Tron are we want to make a unique Tron land drop every turn. Any turn we're playing a non-Tron land or a non-unique Tron land puts us one turn behind. So that's huge. So that's why we're going to mulligan hands that have like Urza's Mind, Forest, Forest, Ghost Quarter, because that doesn't really do what I want to do. So obviously we just draw the perfect hand, and we're just never going to mulligan this entire league. It's going to be hilarious. We're just going to keep seven every single game, 
and never use the uh, London Mulligan. So this hand is good. It's not amazing, but um, we have two Tron lands in a map. So we have we have obviously have turn three Tron. No payoff on three. We have Ugin on four. We also have a Stirrings as well. So we're gonna keep this. Ugin is one of the best catch up cards. Um, where if you're behind, you can you can uh, catch up with it. Obviously we're on the draw here. We'll be drawing a couple cards as well. We find ourselves a Karn or a Worm Coil. We'll have that on turn three. So nice London Mulligan video, Jim. Doesn't even mulligan. It's going to be hilarious. Just going to have the perfect seven every game. Ooh, Dryad Arbor. Um, typically played in in Bogles or Infect. Um, Ugin is pretty good against both those decks, although Infect is very good against us. All right, they're playing Bogles. So this, this turn four, Ugin is going to seal the deal real quick. Um, without a fast draw, they have no chance to beat an Ugin. All right, so now we have a payoff on uh, on turn turn three here, which can at least block or just buy us some time until we get, get to our Ugin. Honestly, if this thing doesn't get any bigger, it can just kill it. So we have a Coronet here. No, another armor is good. Oh my god. All right. Well, it's a good thing we drew his ballista because we're actually just dead. They have the the absolute nuts for the most part of triple ethereal armor on turn three, which is pretty good. Um, thankfully, we have a blocker and a ugin. Although amusingly, the ugin won't kill the dryad arbor because it is colorless, which is pretty funny. But um, they are attacking for ten on turn three, which is pretty good. If they find a, a Rancor or a Griff Spoon or some way to get this thing evasion, we are going to die on turn on turn four here, which is going to feel pretty bad. But hopefully that doesn't happen. All right, please don't kill me. Uh, Daybreak Coronet does not grant Trample. So it's really just Rancor or Griff Spoon, right? I mean, it is a very good matchup for Tron, uh, Bogles, but if they kill you on turn four through a blocker when you have Ugin the following turn, I mean, there's not much you can do. It's uh, pretty frustrating, but that's modern sometimes, you know. Uh, the modern decks are very powerful, and nut draws exist. If you're on the play, we, we would have won easily, but them's the breaks in modern sometimes. All modern decks are quite powerful, and despite good matchups, bad matchups, sometimes you just overpower your opponent. All right, so we are going to sideboard out our relics. They're probably going to have Stony Silence, which is very good against us. Um, Gaddic Teague is possible as well. Amusingly enough, we're actually going to bring in removal spells because uh, they kill Gaddic Teague and they kill. Um, they kill uh, Core Spirit Dancer. We're taking out the Relics. Uh, Ostone's important. I guess Ostone's actually not that important. Because Ostone doesn't kill the... Um, hmm. Eh, Ostone's pretty important. We, we want to try and uh, lessen the impact of Stony Silence if we can. Got an Ulamog. Warbreaker's pretty good. Worm Coil is actually not like that important. Um, and then Thrag Tusk is not necessary. Thought not Seer. I think I'm pretty happy with this. I guess the Ghost Quarter can go. The, well, while it would have been good in the previous scenario, I guess I could have actually... Maybe I screwed up that game, actually. Um, Yeah, I actually punted. Now I'm thinking about it. I had Ghost Quarter in my deck. I could have just gotten the Ghost Quarter and Ghost Quartered the... Uh, the, uh, the Arbor. And given how far all in they were on it and the fact that there were zero Umbras on it, we wouldn't have had Tron for a turn or two, but... Probably would have won us the game. All right. It's good to throw your first game, you know, but that's okay. And my, and my, and my mind was all just on Tron and Ugin. Um, yeah, that's bad. All right. Uh, all right. We're going to leave a... Uh, should we leave a Ballista? I suppose they could also kill uh, a Gaddic Teague. That's definitely a good lesson in Tunnel Vision. You know, not... It's... 
it's a good lesson in not tunnel visioning and not letting your opponent's good draws tilt you. You know, like we were focused on the fact that they had three three, three ethereal armors and their hand was pretty good. And, you know, are we really going to lose this game to Boggles? But we actually had a winning line. And because we were focused on that, we didn't find our winning line. And that's a very easy thing to struggle with in Magic. Um, I struggle with it on occasion. Players struggle with it very, very commonly. Where they're just not focusing on the things in the game that actually matter. You know, yes, they drew three Ethelia armors. Yes, that was very fortunate for them. But in reality, you can't control that. And the most important thing in Magic is to focus on the things you can control. So... I'm actually okay with that loss for for teaching purposes because that is a very important thing to uh, to be aware of. All right, so this hand's not very good. Uh, one Tron land, no colored mana, easy mulligan. Get to use our London mulligan here. All right, uh, another easy mulligan, no lands. Getting frustrated will never help you in a game of Magic, basically ever. Okay, so here we come to. An interesting London Mulligan hand. So you have a five card hand here. We have a star, starrings, and a, and a mine, which is a great start. We have a map, worm coil, world breaker map. So we're going to keep this five. And I think we're going to ship off the, probably the worm coil and the map. Uh, world breaker is pretty good. It can exile an enchantment. It's a pretty good blocker. Worm coil might not be able to block effectively if they have an ethereal armor again with first strike. World breaker can. Worldbreaker is a little hard to cast. You usually can't cast it until turn until turn, until turn uh, four, because it requires Tron and a green source. Hmm. I'm gonna keep the Worm Coil Engine. I think it's just safer. I don't think we're casting Worldbreaker for a while, and it may not matter. All right, so we're gonna put back the map and the Worldbreaker. I must say, I do, I do like the, the London Mulligan rule. It feels like it's much more strategic and interesting than um, than just scroll, you know hoping to scry a good card to the top. You kind of get to kind of sculpt your game plan. Mulligan's not hurt as bad. I kind of like it. I must say. That's not a bogle. Alright, Ugin's good. Alright, we gotta find a, a Tron land. We did it. Now it's fine. Another Tron land. Uh, not quite. So, we're taking the forest here. Uh, this is our, our fourth Tron land, essentially. Tron is, you know, one of each Tron land in a forest. You can catch your green spells. Second Earth's Mind doesn't do much. Chromatic Spheres and stuff don't really matter. So, take the forest. Play tower. Play map. If they have a Sony Silence, it's pretty annoying, but every turn they're playing hate cards, they're not playing uh, a threat, so. We have turn, uh, turn four Ugin lined up again. This time we're on the play, so it's pretty rare they'd be able to kill us on turn three. Alright, there's Sony Silence. Okay. So, not ideal. We have green mana. Speed Drinking, we can draw Nature's Claim, Sylvan Scrying, Ancient Stirrings. Uh, not Chromatic Sphere, unfortunately. Still thinking about that game one a little bit. And that's another important lesson too. When you make a mistake or you you make a an error in some way, being able to to go back or to, to, to let it to notice it, recognize it, and then let it go. Uh, a lot of times magic players will make a big mistake and then they'll play game two while their head's still in game one. Because they're just thinking about the mistake. And that's not good. You know, you need to have your all of your focus in on the next game. So it's 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 tough to swallow it. I made a mistake. Now it's gone. And push it away so you can play the remainder of your match or the remainder of your tournament. Alright, so their clock isn't too fast here. I mean, we draw let's see, they have they have seven next turn. Alright, so we are Without another aura, we have two turns. With a, with the aura, we only have one. So we can draw Nature's Claim to kill Sony Silence, and then 
use our maps and stuff. We can just draw we can just draw an Ursus power plant here and call it a day. No. Alright, we've drawn a bunch of worthless artifacts we can't use. Stony is very good against us. Um Does this play No, because we we Crack. Yeah, well see we we get two shots at it, I guess. So we'll play this. And then if they don't kill us next turn, we have a shot at Nature's Claim into Sphere, Sphere. We have two draws to find a Ursus Power Plant and then pop the O-Stone. They're likely to play an Aura and just kill us, but... All right, starting on a loss and a punt and a couple good lessons. And... That's one of the most important things. Um, it's easy to get frustrated when you lose. It's easy to, you know, blame luck or blame whatever or just get mad or whatever. But the the important thing is, and it's okay to be mad. You know, one of the things, I mean, I have an eight-year-old and, you know, when, when he loses, he gets mad. And, you know, we try to explain to him that it, it's okay to be mad, but you can't be destructive about it. You need to be constructive about it. And you can only be mad for a little bit and you got to let it go. You know, you can't let it linger for too long. You know, it's a little bit of anger is good. It's motivating. It's, I made a mistake. I need to be better. I want to improve. Too much is, is destructive though. So be angry for a little bit, then let it go and focus on being constructive. So a lot of good lessons in that game despite losing and, and playing back. <laughs> but tunnel vision, it's bad. And then when you make a mistake, you got to let it go. And not to dwell on things you can't control you know our opponent drew three ethereal armors by turn three and attack for 10 which is really really good but we can't control that we can only control how we re how we react to it so for the purposes of the video i'm calling that a win all right let's go here london mulligan um hands like this are often a trap so it's it's tough. So we have two Tron lands and a, a non-forest, non-Tron land land, which is pretty bad. Um, we have two green cards we can't cast. We have an O-Stone. We have a Ballista. Uh, we draw any forest, star, sphere, or map. Our hand is very good. So forest, star, sphere, map. That's uh, 17 cards. Um, the problem is we have to draw those or we're not going to get anywhere because this hand basically just doesn't do anything. Um, we do have two interactive cards we can cast. You know, Ballista on two can kill like a Thalia or a Noble Hierarch or something. Ostone on three, worst case scenario, can blow up on five, um, which requires drawing lands as well. If a hand like this draws like Karn, Karn, Ugin, Ugin, we're going to lose. Um, it's a close one. Uh, typically, I don't like hands like this that much because a lot needs to go right. And most importantly, the deck mulligans very, very well. Um, I think a hand like this is a trap. I might be a little more inclined to keep on the draw because we have one extra card. And with one star, sphere, map, or forest, this hand does come together very well. But it's only 17 cards, and we have 53 cards in our deck. And our deck mulligans really well. Roach in a ship here. And there's your reward. Natural Tron. Don't need the redundant piece. Opponent says, hey Jim, enjoy your content. Oh, thanks. Uh, we're going to keep. And we're going to put back the extraneous power plant. Opponent mulligans also. Alright, so... Don't actually have a payoff yet, because we have seven mana and an O stone. So we have, you know, O stone on three. All right, so a discard spell. It's fine. If they're playing like green, black, rock. Uh, it could be a little troublesome because they'll have field of ruins and stuff, and don't really have much going on. But Took the Sylvan Scrying. Okay. We draw a map. It works for me. So 
So what kind of swamp discard spell deck is this? Basic swamp discard spell, I feel like, has to mean the rock deck. Don't know what decks play swamp discard spell. I mean, like, maybe like eight rack or something, but it's not very likely. Nice onslaught land. All right, so yeah, it looks like green black. Uh, so we should be in pretty good shape here at the moment. We have a map. We're probably just gonna leave it in play, honestly. Um, so they assassin's trophy us or whatever. We can just rebuild Tron. Are they gonna trophy us before we play our Tron land? It's fine. All right, so we'll just float a mana. I guess we'll just crack the thing now. So let's crack this, replace the mine. Uh, get a forest, which is great. And drag starings is cool. You can buy that. Tower, tower, mine, Ulamog, Ugin. So... We're going to take the Ugin. Obviously, if they have Field of Ruin, it's kind of annoying, but... Taking another Tron land. There might have been an argument for just holding Ancient Stirrings, but they have discard spells too, so so we, so we know what, what land we need to get otherwise. Now mine's going to the bottom, so if they kill my mine again, I guess towers are going to the bottom too, so. We're set up for next turn at least now, so they, ha they were, we're forcing them to have Field of Ruin here. Or Thoughtseize. Once Ugin is in play, yeah, okay, so. Pretty good matchup. Um... They have the tools to disrupt you, but they don't often have the clock to back it up. And then once you board in 4th Rag Dusk, oh yeah. So now, so when, when you sideboard, they have access to Fulminator Mage and Surgical Extraction. So there's definitely times you're going to be playing with no Tron for the rest of the game. But they don't kill you fast enough, so you just cast Worm Coil Engines and beat them, which is pretty fine. So we got all our Rose Stones. Uh, Relic is actually good against them because they have Tarmogoyfs. Uh, I like cutting an Ulamog. Um... Fourth Rag Tusk. Uh, I don't mind Thought Not Seer because we may end up playing the game without Tron. But it's not really a huge thing. Warbreaker's okay. Bullist is fine. It kills Dark Confidant. Ugin's good. This is fine. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, we're mostly just going to be trying to jam a million threats down their throat. All of our, all of our Stone Reigns except for Fulminator Mage. Replace the land. So they waste all of our time stone raining you, and you just cast the Rack Dusk on five and kill them. It's a pretty good plan. Uh, I don't want to throw it yet. If we see a lot of surgicals and stuff, and we feel like we really need to lower our curve, we can do that, but I think for now I'm pretty fine. Not worth bringing in removal spells for Dark Confidant or Tyler Striker or anything. It's not the game you want to play, really. All right, so opponent keeps seven. We got a mulligan to six. London mulligan. Man, we're just natty Tron every time, you know? Uh, we're going to keep this. We're going to put back uh, the matching Tron land. Um, map can replace the Tron land they, they, they take, so. Sure. You're not going to be happy, friend. The interesting part is we may just leave the map in play and not even pop it because we're expecting for one of our Tron lands to turn into a forest. Map can replace that one. Um, so like getting a forest preemptively, even though we do want green mana, may not be necessary. Grizzly bear. Sure. Sure. All right, so we'll see what they do. Um, I like these Onslaught lands. That was one of the set, one of the sets that I first started playing in. When I first started playing Magic seriously. It was an onslaught. Long time ago, in uh, a solar system that's right here. Not even a galaxy far, far away. I watched the Star Wars trailer uh, about an hour ago. Normally, I don't watch trailers. Um, I'm a pretty anti-trailer guy, but I figured I would not be able to avoid it Avoid it for the next eight months with streaming and stuff. I, I just got to start Star Wars on stream occasionally. I'm going to make it a YouTube video probably with my comments on it when I stream later. 
All right, so we're not going to crack map. We're just going to untap and let them field us. No. So they declined to field us because they didn't want to give us green mana, and they got punished because we drew a payoff for our Tron. So works for me. Uh, they have very few good answers to Worm Coil Engine. It's often just Declamor, which is a common from like Shadow Moor or something. It's effectively a naturalize that puts the card on the bottom of your opponent's deck. And it's probably one of their only good answers to Worm Coil Engine. Field the tower, sure. So now I can replace it. It's Tron up again. We got Starrings available now, Sylvan Scrying, all sorts of good stuff. And of course, Worm Coil's already in play, which is really, really good for us. So, all right, sure. Yeah, I think that uh, Green Black is a pretty good matchup for Tron. It's It may not seem like it because they have four Field of Ruins and four Assassin's Trophies, and uh, but it takes them so much time to cast those cards. And there's just so many cards they just can't beat out of us. I think we're uh I think we're pretty favored. So 101. Definitely saw some good London mulligans there. We have mulligan pretty well. We mulligan to natural tron twice on six cards. I think you on six cards you don't really notice the London mulligan as much because it sort of just feels like a scry. It is definitely better. When you start going to five and fours when you really notice it, which is good because I think that giving an advantage to players who mulligan to five and four is a very good thing. Uh, it's obviously very frustrating in Magic to mulligan to five or four. Kind of have this helpless feeling of being on four cards, just being like, I have no chance to win. You know, and it, it helps mitigate that at least a little bit. All right, London mulligan. Let's go. Take him to London. Man. The first lesson in playing Tron, just be really lucky. And this is part of the draw to the deck, honestly, is that, you know, 90% of your time, percent of the time, you are, you know, working really hard to crack scryings and stars and maximize your draw steps and try and set up your Tron. And then 10% of the time, you just draw Tron and crush your opponent, and it's awesome. You know? Wins up to ETH, sure. All right, sure. I mean, Wins up to ETH is usually only played in fair decks, and I think that... I think fair decks are... Decks that, that mulligan... Or that don't mulligan often are obviously decks that don't benefit from... Uh, the London Mulligan rule is Boggles again? Or Devoted Druid? Wow. It's going to be funny. We have Natural Tron again and just lose. That's so funny. We're, we're definitely getting comboed here. Um, we don't really have any outs. So it's not like we could like find something to stop this. So we're just going to say go and hope our Karn's good enough. Um, we could Chromatic Sphere because we're not going to crack the map yet. Um, yeah, I guess we'll sphere and say go, because we want to cycle through the sphere and see if it's a, we, we draw a better card than uh, Karn next turn. They're probably just overall all, all rolled up, though, you know, why not? So they're not a fair deck, they're a combo deck also, looking to assemble a certain number of cards, and there you go. Hopefully they have a uh, company and not just the actual combo. Three card combo assembled. I would like to see what their kill condition is because if it's if it's uh, walking blister, they're less likely to have um, to have a stony silence. But whatever, I'm not gonna sit here and make them do it for the next five minutes. My time is valuable. Your time is valuable. We got turn three in the play. What are you gonna do? You know. Another game where if we were on the play, we probably would have won. But that's modern sometimes. All right, so we're going to want to bring in our removal spells. This is actually a very good matchup. They basically have to turn three you, or they uh, 
they struggle mightily. And now we're bringing in sideboard cards, rem removal spells. Um, I like Grafdigger's Cage as well. Turns off Cord and Company. Uh, they don't usually have Stony Silence, so we're not going to bother with this. And then I'm not really interested in Thought Not Seer either. We're just going to shave down on Worldbreaker and Ulamog. And then the relics are actually pretty bad, too. Let's cut those. We can let you leave. Uh, I guess we'll leave Ulamog. I don't think they're going to be messing with my lands. Typically, we shave one Ulamog when we're sideboarding because we assume our opponent's going to have some way to mess with our lands. I could have Damping Sphere. That could be a thing. Um, but I'm not really willing to bring in my Nature's Claims in the dark like that. So... All right, so we got uh, a pair. Pairs are bad when you're playing Tron. And Worm Coil is not even very good against them, so pretty happy to mulligan here. Now we got two Tron lands, a Scrying, a Map, and this, this hand's great. All right, so we're going to keep this one. And we're going to send... We're on the draw. We're going to send the uh, the Map packing. Because we have uh, turn one, turn two, Sphere, Crack, Scrying... And then you go turn two druid, we untap it either and kill it and play worm coil, it's pretty good. Yeah, so map is unnecessary. Sphere plus scrying is better than map. Oh, it's on me, sorry. The the prompts for the London Mulligan aren't great on arena on arena. What? Well. How do you like them apples? I don't know about them apples. Applesauce. All right, so that's that's a thing that happens. Uh, sphere go. So now if they play Druid on two, we, we got to just kill it, I guess, and we got to be behind on our Sylvan Scrying, which is annoying, I suppose, but fine. We have the answer. I mean, the the pressure is on these these devoted Druid decks enormously to turn three combo you with their three card combo, and that's a thing that does not happen very frequently. Thalia? Uh, that's pretty annoying, honestly. Uh, now we can't scrying until next turn? Alright. That's interesting. Have not seen that before out of the uh, company decks. We're not going to kill Thalia. We don't care about it that much. Just a, an inconvenience when this card is exceedingly valuable because you must not die to the druid combo if possible. Chalice on one. Hmm. I don't really know what's going on anymore. Maybe they boarded out of their um, devoted druid combo deck into something else. I don't know what's going on. So, chop. Hmm. Okay. Uh, sure. Chalice on one is actually pretty good against us. Uh, because we, uh, have a lot of random one mana spells. Our maps, our stars, our spheres, and cycle. Um, but once we get Tron online, it can also be totally irrelevant. So it's a pretty swingy card against us. If our hand is really good, it does nothing. If our hand is bad and requires some, uh, some massaging and finagling, then it can be tough. So, like, they're playing Court of Calling and Thalia and maybe they... I don't even, I don't even know. This is a weird... Seems like two different decks, honestly. Alright, Farce is fine. Um, they have three cards in hand. I mean, they can't cast Company. Even if they could, it wouldn't matter. I guess we're going to Sylvan Scrying for a Sanctum of Ugin. Um, kind of strange. Devoted Druid Vizier combo with Thalia and Chalice, possibly both on the board. Maybe some sort of transformational thing. A lot of modern is this. A lot of modern is trying to figure out what it is that your opponent is doing. Um, because there's a lot of weird stuff going on in modern, a lot of weird decks. And 
a lot of the value of playing a weird deck like our opponent is playing is your opponent doesn't know what you're doing. So they may, they may make wrong plays, wrong keeps, et cetera, et cetera. And you gain value by playing a, a strategy that's not practiced against. So one of the most important skills in modern is to be able to try and deduce what they are doing as fast as you possibly can. And this game's been weird so far. I'm not going to lie. Like, I have seen green-white sort of hate bear Eldrazi decks. They have fetch lands, so they're probably not playing Leonid Arbiter. You gotta take each, take each little piece of information and piece it together. So, they have fetch lands, probably not playing Leonid Arbiter. They have Chaos, probably not playing Path to Exile. And so on and so forth. I mean, we have a Worm Coil Engine, they have a Thalia, and then we're both uh, sitting here. They chose not to sack their canopy. So they must want more mana. Because with no plays last turn, I ima imagine they would want to just crack that and try and find one of their two drops. But here we are. Um, I don't really see a reason to expose my Sanctum yet. Even though they would just take me off Tron. Like, we can just play Ursus Tower here and just say go. Sauron and Saruman. I'm also not sure why they wouldn't crack that on their main phase. When they have a you know a deck full of presumably two mana creatures, but kind of a weird game here, I'm not gonna lie. Yes, they played they played a Heath in game one too, so no uh no Leon and Arbiters. Sure. I mean, one coily boy. Okay, so they're blocking with Thalia, which is kind of interesting. Um, they can't combo off at instant speed with uh, Devoted Druid, because it needs, it needs to be non-summoning sick, um, which is good for us. And they're in the Abyss, the Worm Coil. Our life total is fairly irrelevant because they have an infinite combo, so it doesn't really matter. So Worm Coil is not really great in this matchup. Cool art. Alright, so... I mean, okay, never mind. <laughs> no more words are necessary. I was going to say that we're not going to dismember here because they have four cards in hand. And even though it looks like we have the win, I don't. It's not worth risking something when we can just keep attacking and leaving, holding this member in our hand to be safe. But then we drew Walking Ballista, and it just doesn't really matter anymore. So uh, just the old six-six Ballista, which can kill you, kill them, kill Vizier, kill everything. Sacks tank them, get Ulamog. Very very bizarre game here. This opponent's just not really doing anything. I mean, they they didn't play a land one turn, so it's not like they had all lands. Very weird game. Very peculiar. I mean, is it possible they had one drops in their hand? That would be just really bad deck building or sideboarding. Um, Alright, I think I want to cut one of the Ulamogs for the World Breaker. Um, well, now they have, like, Thalia and Chalice. I don't even know. Like, what do we got to expect this game, you know? I don't even, I don't mind having a Thrag Tusk or two. Maybe Thrag Tusk is better than Worm Coil Engine. Maybe a mixture of the two would be preferable. Um, I don't think it's Ghost Quarter is necessary either. Because it's, it's got Ghost Quarter and a Worm Coil. Maybe let's just not play World Breaker. And we'll just play three Thrag Tusk. Just in case they have some more, like, Land Hate or something. Or some Cyborg cards. Game one, they look like a very basic devoted druid deck. Game two, they look like a weird prison deck. So just like lower our curve a little bit, just in case, and uh, see if Drag Dust can get it done. I think I'm still interested in Cage. I assume they're still a company cord deck. I mean, maybe they're not, but Cage at least stops cord, and cord is one of their best cards. So weird games. 
Definitely weird games. Once again, pairs are bad. Uh, I think we're going to five here. Opponent mulligans to five also. Uh, this hand is missing too many pieces. If this is an Ancient Stirrings, maybe we can start talking about it because we can go turn one, map, sphere, turn two, crack, stirrings, play land, play map. Uh, but we're going to mulligan again. Oh boy, this is fun. They keep five, we're going to four. London Mulligan, save the day. And London Mulligan does save the day. This is a really good end. Um, we're going to keep these four cards. Tron Land, Tron Land, Map, Spirit Dragon, and dump these three cards. Pretty, pretty easy. So, big time London Mulligan. Uh, if you replace any of these four cards with one of the cards, one of those three other cards, this hand's much, much worse. But we can see the London, London Mulligan in full effect here. So now they're going to play a one drop. They must have just had like Noble Hierarchs in their hand last game after Chalicing. I don't know how you can play a company deck without playing Noble. I mean, they're not. I, I don't know what they're doing, honestly. Scrybug. It'd be funny if they just turn three does again. I always have a London Mulligan, seems pretty good for their deck too, which is a combo deck. Yep, here we go. Unfortunately, we're two turns from Ugin, so. <sighs> if you can't laugh. You'll cry, you know? All right, so we are turn three, two games in a row. I guess not in a row, but in a match. Um, London Mulligan rule definitely helps combo decks, which might be a, a count against Tron, because typically combo decks are good against Tron if they're really, really fast. Again, I think that the Vizier decks typically a very good matchup for Tron, unless they turn three you. So, weird match, though. They were just like, they just nut drawed us in game one and three on the play, turn three kill. And then game two, they were just uh, they were just like a Thalia Chalice deck for like a game for some reason. So weird, weird deck. All right, so we're one and two. Uh, we probably threw a match against uh, Bogles. Um, and then I mean, getting turn three, really can't do much. We have to draw a Contortion or a Dismember to beat a a turn three kill on the play from the from the Devoted Druid decks. So. Not a ton we can really do, honestly. And, uh, you know, they're not super likely to have the three-card combo in their hand. Um, the London Mulligan does help that, but not a ton. I mean, I'm sure Frank Carson can run the numbers. They're not good. But, say la vie. Look, Karn. Is Karn mad? Karn looks mad. But, as we saw that game, uh, the London Mulligan made our four-card our four hand look pretty good. Um, if they don't turn three us, I think we were in really good shape that game. Okay. This one's a little better. Uh, I do like keeping star stirrings tab. Ooh. Our opponent is also trying. Whoa. What is this? Our opponent is trying to abuse serum powder in Tron. That's interesting. Um, definitely really good for them because the Tron mirror is literally only about casting Karn before your opponent. Um, Serum Powder is really cool with the London Mulligan rule. Uh, how it works is you have to finish resolving your Mulligan before you actually powder. So you draw seven, say you Mulligan to six, you draw seven again. If there's a powder in that hand, you have to finish, decide to keep your six card hand. You have to put your one card back and then you Serum Powder with those six cards. So it's really cool because if you want to keep your six because it's good, you can just bottom the Serum Powder. So if you want to use it, you can use it. If you don't want to use it, you can just bottom it. So it is, it is powder gets a lot better with the London Mulligan rule. Uh, we're going to keep. Um, we have Star, Stirrings, Tower, and a Karn. 
Um, now we know we're playing the mirror. Maybe I actually don't want to keep. It's very important to mulligan super aggressively in the mirror, and these worm coils almost don't matter. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mulligan, actually. I think in the dark, I would keep this hand every time. Um, however, we know we're playing the mirror due to the serum powder, and we're on, we're on the play, and we just have to cast Karn on turn three. Uh, the Karn on turn three in the mirror is essentially unbeatable on the play. And this hand has a high chance of fumbling around for a turn or two. These worm coils are worthless. Let's try and abuse the London Mulligan here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mulligan. Okay. This is a very interesting one. Because this one adds a ghost core to the equation. So oh, we're five now? I don't I already mulliganed. Ew, okay. Um but we added a ghost core to the equation. Opponents have six cards. They keep their six. We're going to keep these five. We're going to bin the power plant and the forest. Keep our ghost quarter. So we can at least break them up for a turn. And we'll have our own drawn online. So we're going to keep. We're going to get rid of the extra power plant and the forest. And we're going to go from there. We have Tron rolled up for turn three. So we are drawing live to a... Karn specifically or other big things, and we have the Ghost Quarter naturally too, which is cool. So, All right. and these are the cards they have exiled, so they have one less Ulamog, and honestly, not much else has been bad. They haven't lost any Tron land, so. Daddy's home. Yeah, I mean, this is how you gotta do it in the Tron Mirror. There really is no other option, so. Pleased to meet you. Nice to know you. Goodbye. Yeah. Concession in three, two, one. No. Mm. We have Worm Coil and Ghost Quarter too, so we're probably going to make make this turn into a double stone rain. We'll see what their land drop is. Oh, yeah, obviously it's a mine, so they're going to mine again. We'll probably just double stone rain, cast worm coil. We have ghost quarter too. Actually, with, actually, you know what? With ghost quarter, we're gonna plus. They got the mine, but they played the power plant. I guess that makes sense. They don't want their mine to die. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, so we are going to we're actually we're actually gonna plus, play worm coil, and we can ghost quarter them as well. So let's get rid of that. Put this up. Have two more stone rains in the uh, in the chamber. They exiled a didn't tell me. I don't know what they exiled. Oh, it's here. There it is. Worm coil engine. Got it. Um and Goose Quarter, and Worm Coil, and Sphere. The Tron Mirror is one of the least fun matchups in Magic's history. Alright, so the, in the draw step, we're going to kill the uh, non-Tower Land. Yeah. So, the games are usually heinously lopsided, and being on the play is exceedingly important. So, London Mulligan means that we can go real low, looking for good hands here. Uh, we're gonna want all four nature's claims, and that's really it. I don't mind bringing in Thought Knots here, honestly. Um, Ugin's really bad. Ozone's really bad. Bring in Thought Knots here. Um, I don't hate Thrag Tusk either. There's definitely the possibility that they, uh, they Surgical Extraction you post board to take away your ability to have Tron at all. So having some cheaper threats is reasonable. They waste all the resources doing that. Um, Ballista can at least tag. You know, we're just going one drag dusk. Ballista can at least tag a Karn for one. Just try and buy one more turn against it. But um, unfortunately, if they have Karn on turn three, there really isn't anything you can do. You know, you can try and get lucky and maybe Mai as a map. Or, it's just, it's just, 
it's just it's tough. You can claim a turn one map, maybe. Uh, all right, so serum powder is added again. This time they lo they've been pretty fortunate to uh, to not serum powder any Tron lens. They have star stirring since. All right, they have a a fresh seven. We have Karn and two pair. And this hand is not keepable. Uh, this hand is like turn four Tron. And that is almost assuredly not good enough. Opponent kept seven means their hand's probably good. Um, I don't think I want to keep a hand that can't produce turn three Tron. So we're going to roll again. Uh, this hand is atrocious. Uh, we're gonna mulligan. This hand is turn three Tron. This hand plays. We can keep this. Um, we can't beat a car, but nothing can. So, we're gonna keep. We're gonna put back two cards here. Um, I think it's just the two farce. We have Thought Not on three. I mean, like, we do have... Uh, yeah, we just can't do much against the uh, Karn. All right. Don't Karn me, friend. Seeing Serum Powder in other decks besides, like, Serum Powder Eldrazi is telling. Uh, it, it honestly might not even matter. We had it anyway, so... Yeah, it's cool with your Natural Tron, LOL, but, like... We already had it. And, uh, which might not matter. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, seeing Serum Powder in non Serum Powder Eldrazi decks is pretty interesting. If that's the future, if that's actually right, um, I imagine they'll ban Serum Powder because of how it interacts with London Mulligan rule. All right. Well, they have turn three Tron. Their ghost quarter is gone, which is interesting. So they only have, they don't have any ghost quarters to, to stop Artron, but obviously all they need is a Karn. So we shall see. They got Urza's Tower. Big surprise. All right, well, it is your turn, friend. Please don't play Karn. I will concede if you do. Oh, it's on a Karn. It's a Ballista. Which is good. Okay. So you're telling me there's a chance. I'm going to get... I can get a Ghost Quarter here. I don't hate it. Nothing we do next turn really matters. Like, Thought Not isn't even that good. Ballista's wor worthless. Worm Coil's okay, but doesn't. it's not the axis that really matters in this game. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'll just fire it off. Um, the land they searched for was Urza's Tower. Typically, typically you want to kill the non-tower lands, but it's possible they have duplicates. Uh, I'm going to just hit the tower in their draw step. Although letting them untap does allow them to pump into Ballista. Um, I think that's fine. Now they have like no mana for their turn, basically. And I don't think we're going to lose to Walking Ballista by itself. We are casting Worm Coil next turn. Uh, it does make our Thought Not Seer a little worse. But with their hands so full, honestly, Thought Not doesn't really matter that much. They clearly light, and they're, they're clearly light on payoffs. 
Nope, you're in your draw step. Gots to move to your main face. You can't cast Sylvan Scrying in your draw step. That's just not how it works. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny too. That's a ram spell. That's pretty funny actually in like post sideboard games that like if you get Blood Moon or something you can just use Serum Batter to ramp. That's funny. Alright, so I mean Thought Out Sarah isn't even good, they can just kill it. So let's play Worm Coil and hope they're not Ugin. I mean Ulamog. Ugin isn't really good here. I was just uh reading this card, I think. Um I mean, Worm Coil should buy a lot of time. This is no Ulamog, please. What do you cut from Tron to play Serum Batter? We cut like a... You can cut like a land or two. Um, my hair's gone. Where'd my hair go? What happened? Oh my god. Cut like a payoff or two, I guess. He's got the relics. Powder. Oh god. Eh. Never mind. Sure. I mean, that's fine by me. Oh, stone. All right. So they've drawn all the bad payoffs, which is very good for us. Um, I think we're just going to Ballista and set up for Ulamog next turn. Ballista can kill their Ballista. And then pressure... Ugin. Like, if they had any other good payoff, they would have cast it, so our thought on Seer is basically worthless. Ulamog. Um... Do I, if I shoot Ballista twice, they just shoot my Ballista twice? I probably should have attacked first. Yeah, that was dumb. I didn't decide what, I didn't decide what I want to do yet. Shoot twice. They shoot my thing twice. I shoot their Ugin. It's act their Ugin. Um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so they allowed the first one to resolve. So they only got one shot in response. I guess that makes sense, though, because I, mean, I need to do one less shot. So, all right. So they shoot me. That resolves. Everything attacks Ugin. Why is Ugin still on their deck post board? It's kind of weird. All right. I mean, don't Ulamog me or Karn me. Because I got you next turn. Big Papa. I like it when you call me Big Pop, uh, the show stop. Uh. All right, so now they've doubled up on both Tron lands. It's interesting. Um, I'm just going to blow O-Stone without even activating Ugin first? Oh, they're Fate Countering. They have another O-Stone? That'd be pretty good. It's very weird. They have all these thick, like, we, we boarded literally all of these cards out, you know? It's kind of weird. All right, so we'll just shoot Ugin. I guess, and I guess we're going to shoot Ugin, right? I mean, they're destroying a lot of stuff. We're going to, we're casting Ulamog next turn. Yeah, I don't think we care about Ugin, actually. Um, I'm just going to hit Forest Tower, I think. Yeah, this is going to destroy everything but the Ugin. 
It goes to five. Like, we're not losing to Ugin here, you know? I guess shooting them doesn't matter either, because we're not going to kill them with damage, really. All right, I'll just shoot the Ugin, I guess. Ulamog's coming to play next turn. It's going to attack twice and kill them. You know, damage doesn't really matter whether they deck or not, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. 14. Big Papa. He's so hungry. Hungry. This is a concession. The scoop lag gets the scoop lag. All right, sweet. So we beat Serum Powder Tron in a very weird game, too, where they cast multiple cards that we sideboarded out. Uh, but it seems like kind of hard matchup. I mean, because with the ability to Serum Powder, so few cards actually matter in the mirror. It's literally just Tron, cards that find Tron, Karn, Ulamog. So with so few cards mattering, the Serum Powders are actually great. So kind of interesting. It's our last round to have in store for us. Uh, okay. So this hand is a lot better than our, our previous trap hand. We have two Tron lands, two, two star effects, a Karn, an Ostone, and an Ulamog. So we have a, a good payoff, a good catch-up card, and two Tron lands, two draws, and we're on the draw. So we have many, many looks at the third Tron land, Sylvan Scrying, Ancient Stirrings, Expedition Map, Extra Stars... Relic Cycles. We have a lot of luck, so we're going to keep here. Relic Impertinitus. Yeah, that's not a... That's not for us. Stirrings is great. Excellent draw. Serum Visions. What deck plays Island Serum Visions Relic of Progenitus? Bottom bottoms. All right, there's a blue light control deck. That's pretty good for us. Sure. So it looks like just blue light control splash or not splashing. Uh, playing main deck relic. Splashing for relic. You amuse me, Jim. All right. Uh, let's make a green ski here. All right. Let's play the sphere. Let's green ski again. Try to get the most information possible before we cast the stirrings. Heh, <laughs> it's funny. Alright, bombs away. Alright, so forest is fine. Um, definitely want to make a land drop next turn for sure. Getting, getting green mana is nice. Nice lands. I like those lands. Good lands. Good land choices. Alright, sphere me. Or star me, sorry. Star me. Pokemon. Right. Um just gonna play our own relic and crack it. Definitely not really in a rush against blue white control. Um, it is a little annoying they're going into their cryptic, their cryptic command turn, but it's fine. We can certainly overpower that. They give you plenty of time, you know. Not field it, ruin. Sure. Hope they hit the power plant. Nope, they guessed right. They won their flip. All uh, right, we didn't we didn't show them this. I like arena. They show you what cards they know about. Make sure we exile the field of ruin because they're a maniac playing Crucible of Worlds in their Relic of Progenitus deck. Sure, let's draw. Mm. I'm pretty fine just casting Ballista here. Pressure Planeswalkers possibly, just a threat. Just having anything in play is good against the Counterspell deck because they can't just sit back forever. I don't want to path it. I'm pretty cool with that too. So, Supreme Verdict, you got it. With Forest Forest, Power Plant, Power Plant, we can't really punish them next turn for tapping out, so... Goose Quarter? Sure. Haters. <laughs> That's funny.
Sure. Uh, so so far we they have destroyed one Urza's mine. I think I want to just cast my O Stone. So again, if they play a Planeswalker, we're, we're protected. We've got a full house in play. Power plants over forests, snow covered forests. Sure. That's actually fine because now our second O Stone will get back another O Stone, which is cool. Ancient Sparing. It's pretty good too. Um, we have Mana Leap. We can play around that. I'm just going to cast Stirrings first. Karn, Karn, Ghost Quarter, Star, Forest. Definitely don't want Forest because you want to have all of your basics in your deck to fetch when they Ghost Quarter you. Um, Ghost Quarter itself is, it's okay against them because they have, uh, you know, like Colonnades and stuff. We're, we're reaching the point where we're going to start, start, start hard casting stuff, which is cool. Um, I don't mind just taking Ghost Quarter. Worldbreaker is also a nice threat, so we can keep we can keep casting it. All right, I'm taking Ghost Quarter. Question is, do I want to cast my O Stone or not? Um, kind of feeling Mana Lake a little bit. I'm just play Map. I could have Negate too, I suppose. All right, I'm gonna get one Map. Whatever I get, they're going to kill. So I'm going to get a tower and play it. So if I get a mine and they kill it, then I'm down I'm down on mines. So And now, like, if they don't kill it, I have the option, the power to top deck on them and just cast Ulamog, so they kind of have to. Yeah, that feels pretty good. So we get we get to like basically wasteland them, which is great. Now we're at seven mana next turn, we can start casting things, which is great. Field of ruin, sure. Yeah, a lot of friends here, a lot of friends. So I like casting Worldbreaker here. It may get pathed, but we can constrain their mana a bit. We could hit the detention sphere, but I just don't think that O Stone matters that much. I'd much rather Stone Rain them. Let's constrict their mana. Not targeting field, obviously, because I'll just field us. And get the land anyway. Our goal is to stone rain here. So they can path this. We get another land. And we're pretty close to just hard casting Ulamog, which is kind of nice. And now they're, now they're off Cryptic Command, which is great. So, I believe we're going to try for a Karn. Sphere. Okay. I guess we could Sphere first. There are no four spikes in this format. I guess there are four spikes, but they aren't playable. Okay. Um, I kind of like Towering, too. Karn, 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 Karn. Field to ruin our tower in response. This could be in a gate, which is fine. Right, we are out of basics now. I love I love having five basics in my deck. I just love it. Mana leak. Okay. It's fine. Called that one out a few turns ago, but gotta cast our spells, I think. They have only have three cards left. And we are five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need one more land to cast Ulamog. You can also cast Worm Coil and O Stone together, which is nice. Or we'll just play with the Mog. Target the Colonnade and the Plains, I believe. Again, I don't really care about this sphere. We're going to get it back with the O Stone anyway. Just keep, keep constraining their mana. 
cryptic command counter draw short next turns warm coil o stone sure Karn is also good all right i'm in on Karn. uh we also play on mana lake here too so Negate? Factual, factual negate? Alright. Like it's O-Stone. So now they play a Planeswalker, I have to blow it up and get back my O-Stone, which is nice. O-Stone also plays well with Worm Coil, because I can, uh, ooh, so I can, uh, stop Fizzle Path to Exile, which is cool. Alright, so they brainstormed. Alright, so... I think we have to O-Stone here. I can't let them untap with Jace the Mind Sculptor again. Yeah, I mean, I can't guess where I'm going to Jace anyway, so... Alright. We get our, we get our other O-Stone back, so that's cool. And we are still pretty ahead on threats. They only have four cards in hand. We still have two. O-Stone in play. Tons of mana. Top bottom. All right, so we're definitely concerned with the card Cryptic Command or Snapcaster Mage. Um, drawing Sylvan Scrying is pretty nice. So now the question is do I want to assemble Tron or do I want to not bother and just get Sanctum of Ugin so we can have a bigger threat later? We've already cast two Karn and Ulamog, a Ballista, and a Worldbreaker. So we're a little light on big things to trigger, trigger Sanctum. Um, I don't know we have these either. We can definitely, we can double spell if we scrying for Tron. That's pretty interesting. All right, I'm gonna just cast Sylvan Scrying and see what they do. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six things that trigger Sanctum. And a lot of them win the game by themselves anyway, if they resolve. So I'm gonna just get Tron here. Tower, power plant, uh, mine. I'm just gonna double double cast both worm coil engines. They're probably cryptic one, and the other one will the other one will, will resolve. All right, so now this is fine. Now we're just gonna say go. So if you try and path this, we get to O stone it and get two tokens. It's a fairy, sure. Sure. All right, so pretty easy attack to fairy. Let's see what they do. Possibly have snap path here, which is fine actually, because we get to just condemn. All right, that's fine. We just blow up the O stone. Um, we get our tokens. It's fairy dies anyway. It's all pretty cool. Ostone can be cool at times in this matchup. And just ship another worm coil here. We are nearing the stages of the game where we are running out of gas. So if they are able to answer all of this in a, an efficient time frame, we could be in trouble. You know, we we want Ulamog. They bottom bottom. That's good for us. We have one Ulamog left. A few Karns left, but we're a little low on gasoline. Why do we keep getting settled so hard? That's really bad for us. Uh, it's just like an impossible card to play around. Like I don't see how we can ever play around settled there. Playing around Settle does, does not play around Snapcaster Condemn or other stuff. That is pretty bad. All right. A lot of Settles in in, uh, in Modern right now. I put a, I guess a Blue Eye Control deck yesterday playing like three main deck Settles. They just weren't, they just weren't playing any Wraths. 
All right. That's a boom boom. But now we're in the stage of the game where they have three cards in hand. And any Snapcaster or Cryptic is just devastating. I'm just going to hold this and say go. We have enough mana we can try and double spell. Or wait, wait for them to cast a Planeswalker or something. Yep. That's actually really good. Oh, wait. Because uh, now we can get a Sanctum of Ugin. And go get Ulamog again. However, they can Cryptic counter the Ugin Bounce the Sanctum. We're actually just going to wait again. I'm not really in a rush. I'm going to hold some in my hand to protect it. We're going to wait. That is also good. I guess waiting means I can't replay the Sanctum. It's fair. Um... Field of Ruin, Ghost Quarter, Field of Ruin. They could definitely have more. I mean, if they if they had another Field of Ruin effect, would they have broken me off Tron? It's tough to say. So downside to not playing Sanctum last turn was I played around Field, but I um now I can't play Sanctum. I mean, I can't cast Karn. They Cryptic Bounce Sanctum, replay Sanctum, play Ugin, um, which sinks a little. I'll play Sanctum and say go. I'm going to go for it next round. I, we have to constrain their mana. We can't play one thing. And if they draw a Ghost Quarter, then so be it. All right. And I think that Karn is probably more important than Ugin is. All right, let me sacrifice it. All right, I'll get a little log. Two, four, six, crypts. They, they could have done it. Maybe, maybe they didn't, 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 didn't see the play. From their side, they usually want to counter those and bounce the Sanctum, so I can't get a little log. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so now we're just going to... Uh, just going to Ulamog. I'll crack star first. Sure, it doesn't matter. I don't know if I want to cast a Sylvan Scrying, honestly. I guess I do. Alright, so probably have Snapcaster Mage here. So Snap Path. Or Snap Path, I'm sure it's fun. So no. We're almost out of lands. It's pretty cool. All right. I mean, we're like still kind of middling a little bit. You know, they they still have enough lands where that wasn't devastating. We did, we took two of their creature lands, which which is good. But field of run, sure. All right. I think we are waiting again for a second spell. That's pretty good. All right. Karn. This could be a long one because we may actually be trying to restart the game with Karn. Absorb. I still have Cryptic up? Jeez. The three mana counter spell. Too good. And they have one Cryptic, two Cryptics. I don't know how many like actual relevant cards we have left. It's all four cards. Ugin. We have an Ugin left. 
We have a Ballista left. We have two Worm Coils left. Ugh. I don't know if we can win, honestly, at this point. I'm just going to say go. Sure. Little do they know. Oh, oops. I mean, like, they probably have more paths, too. Oh, I guess they're not playing snaps, because they, they had Relic, right? Okay. That's Path, Path, Condemn, Path, Colonnade. Relic. Like, I'm concerned with just running out of threats, but we really can't do much about it. Like, all right. All right, your turn. They've been through. I should sort this exile. Path, path, settle, condemn, path. It's the one path left. I feel like they're probably going to sell us timely reinforcements. Or whatever. That's pretty good. I mean, we, uh, now I'm not sure what we even want. I mean, obviously we want to go to Ugin, but I'm saying I'm not sure what we're going to cast. Like, would I rather have an Ugin or a Karn in play? Because I'll probably count it. Whatever one I cast first, they're going to counter probably. Although now that I know about Ugin, um, all right. They don't know about Karn. No, that resolved. I'm, I'm going to minus zero in attack. Or they have Settle. If they have Settle, I get to, I get, now I get to resolve Karn also. Which is pretty insane. They may have finally succumbed here. Um, we are going to plus this on their hand because restarting the game might actually happen. A mana leak? Sure. We have Ghost Quarter to defend our Planeswalkers against the Colonnade. They only have... That's their only Colonnade left. Relic? Sure. I think we might have finally gotten there. Alright. Um ten cards. I mean, we have one walking ballista left. I guess the uh what's that a remand? That's interesting. I guess uh we can try and push it through a counter spell with our Karn, but that's our that's our win condition, is uh, we're not going to ultimate Ugin as we just die. We only have 10 guards in our deck. So I guess we have 30 damage worth of Ugin left, which is good. Yeah, we're like, we got it. We, we get it. We get the idea. No graveyards. Detention Sphere. Okay. Nice, nice O-Stone. I mean, they have to hit Karn, sure. So 
It's a scoop, probably. It's a no. All right. So fate counter here on tap. I mean, I don't think we're playing any more spells this game unless we draw the walking ballista. So I'm just gonna blow this. Get our card back. I only have one card in hand, so give it to me. And then our Ugin wins the game. Snapcaster Mage? Okay. That play so they're playing Snapcaster in their four relic deck? Alright. Live your life, Bonnet. You know, you live your life. I mean, obviously the Ugin can bolt the Snapcaster. Karn's still going up. Now they're kind of locked on one card a turn, so if you field of ruin. Alright. Alright, we have no Tron. You got it. You have turned us off, Tron. We only have Ugin and Karn in play, along with a hundred lands. Yes, yeah, so we have we have our deck is entirely air and one 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 and one walking ballista. That's nice too. They activated that because now I have some, a little F six value too. Yeah, sure. Um, I should think I just minus here. That's eight. My ballista. Yes. Should I minus here. We're never gonna ultimate car. Doesn't really matter. Plus your face. Play big boy. Say go, and I'm feeling pretty good. Sure. I believe you're dead on board. Pump twice, seven, fourteen, and three. Yep. I think we played pretty well that game. I'm pretty happy. Against control, it's very important to pace your threats. I think that game was probably lost when they didn't cryptic bounce the uh, Sanctum of Ugin. All right, so now I get Cyborg. Uh, Relics are out. O Stones are out. Um, Ugin's actually not very good in this matchup. I want all my Thrag Tusk, all my Thought Not Seers. Some number of Nature's Claims. Uh... The ballistas aren't great, but they are castable early at least. But I don't think it really matters. It's got one ballista, and the worm coil is not very good because worm coil just gets pathed. So now we're like much more threat dense. We might have stony silence. We have three answers to it. I don't go want to go too crazy. I only actually have you know twelve artifacts in our deck for stony because we're boarding out the uh, o stones and the relics. Yeah, this is all good. Is it possible that Ugin is better than Worm Coil? Maybe it is. Um, I'll revive it for game three if we, if we lose. We're not going to lose, though. We got to be aware of uh, of Field of Ruin Surgical Attraction, too. Oh, look, Natural Tron. This is, a, this is actually like not the best hand um, because we're all air, and if they have you know, Wasteland Surgical or whatever, but we're obviously going to keep this hand, so... They have stony of his hand gets pretty annoying. Never mind, it's fine now. Alright. I mean we are we are all dressed up. We currently have nowhere to go. But that's okay. Because we, our opponent is not not in a hurry. You know? Opponent is not going anywhere for a while. I get stony silence? No. Alright. Sauron and Saruman. Mono card I liked. Wayfarer's Bobble. Wayfarer's Bobble was a one mana artifact. Pay two and sacrifice it, but a basic land to play tapped. It was a colorless rampant growth. That card was cool. I like that card. Alright, so we are going to fetch what? I don't even know what we're gonna fetch. I guess we'll just double up on Tron lands. Let's get a nurse's mine. I think we're just casting it. I mean, they kept seven, right? 
and they didn't do anything in the first three turns of the game, they almost assuredly have a Mana Lake or a Remand or a Negate or something. Uh, maybe we should wait. The thing is, they have Cryptic next turn, so it's like... This is the, I feel like it's the kind of spot where, like, while you're playing Tron, what else are you going to do? You know, but we do have a lot of options here. We can cycle some stuff. We can, like, play Star, cycle through a Scrying, play a map, and just try and find another threat to double, to double up. Um, They didn't field us. They didn't ghost quarter us. They, they just definitely have a counter spell. I'm just going to, like, play it slow here. Um, sure. Uh, I'm going to scrying for a power plant. So we have dubs of all of our remand. Sure. Well, they had it. I was right. Um, and that makes me want to just play Sphere and Map and say go. Mm, it's fine. I mean, they're, now the pressure's on them to actually break up Tron, but they just like can't break up Tron because we have a million redundant copies. They can never tap out because we have Karn. And hopefully we just draw a second threat and get things rolling. Okay. Ghost quarter, my own zap land, sure. So I'm just gonna replace the power plant they're destroying. We got a forest, which is great. Thought not seer is a good one. So now we have eight this turn, nine, ten, eleven next turn. So we can we can just chill. We're gonna set up for thought not seer into Karn next turn. We'll cast some spells though. We'll do some stuff. Claim's not bad. Cast Sylvan Scrying. Alright. Um, getting Sanctum is probably nice here. They could break us off Tron. <clears throat> and now we have no way to reassemble it. You know what? I'm just going to get an Ursus Power Plant here, actually. I, I want to make sure of it. I can Thought Not See your Karn next turn. Well, I guess if they have a, a Ghost Quarter or a Field of Ruin effect, then I can't anyway. But... It's pretty interesting, actually. Alright. Um, I'm just going to double up. And we're just going to say go. Saying go lets them have Cryptic Command, but that's fine because they Cryptic Thought not we resolve a, a Karn, so... Vendillion Click? That's pretty good. That pokes a hole in our plan pretty well. Oh, they targeted themselves and they hit it, they hit a condemn. That is that is interesting. Their hand is so bad they wanted to hit themselves instead of us and our seven cards. Right. Starting ain't bad either. Alright, thought not you. They are short on lands. So they have six spells in hand. Now they're in a real bind. Do they counter this? Do they let it resolve? Alright, they let it resolve. Probably have multiple counter spells. They have Stony Silence and just didn't play it? What is going on? So they have Absorb, Sphere, Leak, Jace, Settle, Stony. Okay. Um, We can play around Mana Leak pretty easily. We can't play around Absorb. I guess Thony doesn't even matter. Sphere doesn't even matter, so we have Claim. Jace doesn't matter. They tap out, we just Karn it. Or just resolve Karn anyway. I think it's just Absorb. Um, Stirrings. Ghost Quarter, Sphere, Star... Ghost Quarter's worthless. Alright, I need to go a little faster here. 
I took a card. Let's go. I'm taking the card. You can hear me clicking, can't you? What's going on? Yeah, thank you. We're just going to say go. We'll leave the, the claim up. Do need to draw like a spell. We are a little land heavy here. All right, they drew Serum Vision and they're casting it. So we are clear for takeoff next turn for Karn. Uh, bottom top, no land. Attack. Map. That was very good. No, because now I can't play around Mana Leak. I just wait a turn? Jeez. I can damn, I can't attack. Alright, so no attacks. Let's draw a card. I think we just cast Karn. If I wait a turn to map, I can't I can't play that and play our mana leak. Or just resolve a stupid Karn. You know, like Yeah. I struck I should draw a card. I'm feeling the time pressure a little bit. If we lose this game, we're going to need to uh, win a fast game three. That's pretty good, too. <laughs> All right, sure. Oh, they have Mana Leak. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm just playing fast. Whatever. I think we're in good shape. We have Nature's Claim for Sphere. We can start hitting their lands. It's interesting. I click again? Mm -hmm. That's like fine. Um, now I get to attack. My hand's pretty bad anyway, it doesn't matter. I take the claim here maybe. They probably take, they take nothing because they can't risk me drawing a good card. Still these five cards in their hand. Plus card, attack them. Search some lands, say go. Gotta hurry up. <laughs> wow, way to get punished. Uh, Sylvan Scrying. Sink. This probably going to get an illicit concession here. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Gas Ballista. Get Ulamog. That'll be the game. All right, so despite all the Field of Ruins and Ghost Quarters, I think decks like Blue-Eye Control and Green-Black are still a dog to draw on. Um, but, so we saw a lot of good London Mulligans there, honestly. Like, the London Mulligan, it's a two-sided coin because the London Mulligan is great for this deck. We had a few really, really good, uh, like, four and five card hands. The counterpoint is the combo decks, as we saw, which got turn, turn three twice in a row. Um also improve and fast combo is tough for tron um you know if, if you're killing on turn three or four tron can't do a ton about that um so that's a thing also our opponents get to see more cards when they mulligan so they're more likely to find damping sphere or stony silence things like that as well but overall i think tron is a huge winner in the london mulligan sweepstakes um huge the, the deck mulligan so well already and being able to, to sculpt your hand out of those seven cards is just something fierce. And uh, Tron was already good on four and five cards. Now it's even better. So either pick up your Tron lands, pick up your Karns, or make sure you're packing some hate. Because Tron was already good in the format. It's probably only getting better. Uh, it's good against Phoenix. Um, and decks like Phoenix get worse with the London Mulligan rule because they're so, they're so redundant and dense with their cantrips that they rarely ever mulligan. You know, they just, they're just cast a bunch of cantrips, figure it out, you know? So, Tron's great. London, Mull London Mulligan rule seems pretty cool. Um, I'm a little concerned as far as it making the unfair decks better, but I would almost rather see them shave down on some of the unfair cards with bannings uh, than use the old Mulligan rule. I kind of like it. It's pretty nice to kind of sculpt your hand and put cards back. A lot of interesting choices. 
You know, it's not just like, should I keep this six? My scry might be good. You know, it's a lot of interesting choices, what, what cards to put back and stuff. So I like it. Very good for linear decks. So thanks for watching this video here on CoolStuffInc.com. Don't forget there is a compendium article with my videos. If you're watching on YouTube directly, hop on over to CoolStuffInc.com. Check out that compendium article uh, every Monday here on CoolStuffInc.com. And uh, I do a written article every Friday. I'm currently in the middle of ranking every Planeswalker in War of a Spark. We did 17 Planeswalkers last Friday. We're doing the, the remaining 20 this Friday. A lot of Planeswalkers. A lot of Planeswalkers. So a lot of fun there. And of course, you can use promo code JIM5 for 5% off your order on CoolStuffInc.com. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching and have a good one.